tuning in today to Nerd Cyclopedia. Uh, this is a nerd denim for Avengers 4 Infinity War. We are coming to you live from the fabulous Nerd Cyclopedia studio here in sunny Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm Scott. And I'm Sam. And welcome today to Nerd Cyclopedia Nerd Denim. Sam, how are you doing? I'm doing excellent today. Yeah. Excellent. Well, that's excellent. great. I mean that's super awesome. You know this this is our first video, so um, I'm, I'm super be... happy. You know we're we're we've been doing a podcast for like the past few years and mm -hmm. everything, but mm -hmm. we're now getting into like the video portion. So we're coming to you live, like Scott said. That's right, from Nerd Cyclopedia Studios, the hottest place that you can be <laughs> in the world. Literally, it's, it's hot. Lights are hot. We didn't think about that, so we might melt a little bit. All right. Uh, Sam's smart because he's wearing a hat. <laughs> uh, <laughs> put there some, we go. I could have put some pancake on, but we could. Say. Uh, so we're going to talk today about Avengers 4. Uh, today is a really interesting day because it's uh, Saturday, it's Sunday, April 28th, and that means two things uh, happen this weekend. Avengers 4 has come, come out already, and we've seen it, and we're going to talk about that. But mm -hmm. also, uh, Game of Thrones, <laughs> like the biggest episode of Game oh, of Thrones ever. Oh, man. Today. Super pop culture weekend, super nerd weekend. I yeah. mean, what more can you, you know, what more can you really ask for? Nothing. Nothing. Because if you ask for more than that, they'll take something else away from you. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. That's a Full Metal Alchemist thing. It's not a Marvel thing, but that's all right. Yep, yep. Uh, so, <laughs> so without further ado, let's tell them, where can you find us? Let's put them up, put up some links in this general, in this general yeah, area. Yeah, uh, in, in, in that Here. area and everything. So, Here. you can find us on um, NerdCyclopedia.com, number one. You can follow us on Twitter at NerdCyclopedia. Mm -hmm. You can um, uh, listen to all our podcasts everywhere at, on t um, Stitcher, um Spotify, uh, iTunes, um, Google Play, anywhere that you listen to podcasts, we are there. I'm pretending that Sam's putting uh, <laughs> links in those places, so I'm hoping that works out. If it doesn't, if it doesn't, maybe they'll just we're, freeze we're, it. <laughs> Let's pretend there's something wrong with the camera. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that's where you can find us, and we're super happy to, uh, to have you here. Also, check out our other uh, podcasts. Uh, we got Nerd Cyclopedia. Uh, Nerd Dendum podcast, which is I think the feed we're dropping this cast mm -hmm. on, so you know about that one. Yeah, uh, and also the uh, Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen feed. That's Keep... our feature podcast. That's right. Right now, that's our main project. We're working on that. We're continuing our recap of the Watchmen graphic novel. Oh uh, yes. Stop on by. I'm sure there will be a link somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. Uh, and uh, so feel free to click on that, explore, check it out, disagree with us, keep that to yourself. Uh, we, don't, <laughs> <laughs> we don't want any negative feedback whatsoever. If you don't like something we're doing, okay. So <laughs> also make sure that you um if you do want to leave us feedback, we definitely want to want you guys to leave us feedback. Yes. N at, um, Nerd Cyclopedia. I'm sorry, nerds at nerdcyclopedia.com. So we uh we want all the feedback as possible. You know, on our um on everything. If you got an opinion about something we talk about. Drop us a line. Please do. <clears throat> Odds Please are do. we'll probably read it. Odds are. Maybe. Yeah. Well, we can't, we can't yeah, promise we nothing, we but we'll probably we will. read it. Uh, so, so that's the preamble, and that's, the, uh, that's how we're going to start that off. So for our, our listeners, you know, tough. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to get into Avengers 4 here, and I, I just kind of want to... Let's set the table for a second now. Okay. Now, I did something weird, which is... Um, which, you know, is not unusual mm -hmm. uh, that I would do something Really? Weird. Yeah, I know, right? Oh, man. Uh, so I uh, I just had a really busy month last month, so I didn't see Captain Marvel until last night. Wow. Now. <laughs> uh, you didn't see it with all the other 8 billion folks that saw it about a couple months ago? No. Oh, uh, and it made a billion dollars, and it didn't need my help for that. <laughs> I'm sure Disney wasn't crying. Yeah. They, 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 they were happy that you went to see it, though. They seem to have done just fine. Yeah. So. so Captain Marvel, saw Captain Marvel in like like literally with no like trailers. Avengers three, Avengers four started. Uh, so, <laughs> like I got I got like five minutes uh, in between because uh, I went to a drive-in. That's why I like to do that sometimes. Uh, no, know, that's pretty pretty good. You these know. are fun movies to yeah. see in a drive-in because yeah. they're yeah. big spectacles and they're super super good. My car stereo is all right. <laughs> you miss that Dolby surround surround sound yeah, in yeah, your you car. Know. It's nice, you know, you can feel the rumble, but it's just your engine running because, you know, you turn it on. You're like, oh, no, it's coming. Uh, so that's what I did. And I, so I got to see the whole, that whole last two movies of the MCU back to back. Okay. Uh, so a lot of people I know did double feature, uh, like to double feature when these guys come out on DVD. Right. So I got a little bit of a head start on that. Uh, just to briefly address Captain Marvel, uh -huh. I thought Captain Marvel was awesome. Very, very fun 
fun movie. Seeing Samuel L. Jackson in his 90s, like, you know, like yeah. his 1995 was yeah. just so cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, um, the, the, the way they did the effects on him mm -hmm. and de-aging, you know, yeah. something they started um, back in what? Um, Civil War, or Captain America Civil War. <clears throat> Excuse me. Actually, even going further back than that, I think they did it in um, Ant-Man. With oh, um, yeah, Hank Michael, Pym and um, Michael Douglas. Yeah, yeah, Michael Douglas. You know, <laughs> they de-aged him. They didn't de his voice, but they de his face. No, yeah, they de-aged his face. Not the voice. He still sounded... <laughs> but okay. they did his face and everything. But, um, yeah, the de-aging process got really good, you know, when it got to Sam Jackson. So you couldn't really tell. It didn't distract you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's that was pretty good as far as the um, Captain Marvel movie. So fun plot, fun character. Mm -hmm. She's super duper terrifyingly powerful, which is neat, <laughs> right? And that's really cool. So she's yeah. definitely the most, the mo like uh, Thor calls himself the strongest Avenger. It's definitely mm -hmm. actually Captain she's Marvel. She's Thanos ready. That's right. She's <laughs> Thanos <laughs> adjacent. <laughs> she's equipped. Uh, she's ready to rock and roll whenever, uh, whenever right. she uh, shows up on the scene. Um, so I wanted to mention that really neat, uh, neat experience to do both at the same time for the first watch on both. So I'm really glad that I got a chance to do that. I got some notes on my phone. I know it's gauche, but whatever. I'm not spending. That's uh, what we do here. At I'm not Park spending money on ink for this. No, not at all. All right, so we don't write anymore. No, we don't. <laughs> We also don't write in cursive this anymore, is the do future, we? <laughs> and you're not going to learn how to write with all the loops and silly stuff. You know, I used to get cards from my like relatives, uh -huh. and I, my mom would have to read them to me. I'd be like, I don't know what this says. <laughs> she'd, be like, she'd be like, it's his, uh, it's his uh, happy birthday. All right, Which, yeah. He has an interpret, you know, interpreter for you, <laughs> reader. Something. And that was just a couple years ago. Oh, uh, so... Man. So let's talk a little bit about this movie. Okay. And, and I want to uh, do... Full, full spoilers. Well, let's so... do a non-spoiler first. Let's give him a little taste. Let's give him a sure? piece. Okay, okay, okay. Just this okay, much. Okay. So let's talk, first of all, Okay. let's talk a little bit about just our impressions. So how... So the big challenge for Avengers 4 was it's the okay. it's the landing, right? Okay. This is this is like the other end of the rainbow. It's the arc. It's the, the okay. landing spot. Uh, how do you think they did sticking the landing? I thought they stuck the landing big time. So if if we're gonna do you know do non spoilers and everything, I'll put a um a tag into the um in the um notations to where we start the spoilers, mm -hmm. so you actually would know you know when we actually start those on the real podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I thought they stuck the landing. Okay. I, I I came out of the movie for very fulfilled, very satisfied, very. You spent a lot of time with these characters. Mm -hmm. I, I know I have for. So long, you know, since 2008 when Iron Man first came out, when when um, Nick Fury came out on that um, in credits or, you know, post credits and said um, to Tony, you know, you're part of a bigger universe. Right. You know, you're not the only superhero <clears throat> out there. Right. And he was telling um, Tony about the Avengers, you know, initiative. Tony, like, you know, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know, right. <laughs> you, you, you know that they pretty much told you and what well, told all us, you know, nerds that were, were really super into this, that mm -hmm. they were going to expand this thing beyond yeah. what other comic book movies that came before, right. you know, couldn't do. You know, Spider-Man couldn't do it, you know, because they were, you know, off with other companies and everything. Daredevil, you know, Batman. I mean, you know, these other companies, uh, you know, comic book movies couldn't expand the universe mm -hmm. beyond the central character, mm -hmm. you know. Iron Man and that end credits team told us that it was just going to blow up. Yeah. And when that happened, um, it was just it was just game on from there. So going from that and coming back, I mean, coming into this, you know, you had you was worried after Infinity War how because Infinity War I thought was really great. Oh yeah. Um, for sure. You know, after the snap and everything, it's just so much emotion and everything. You know. Um, how? <laughs> That's how Thanos did it. He was just like, he was part of one of those jazz bands. <laughs> <laughs> Could you do a point? Could you now? Even a middle finger would be better. No, oh man, wouldn't it be something? A middle finger, you know? And all of a sudden, everybody disappears. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Now that's a superpower. That's yeah, a superpower. Really, I right? You give me that one in traffic. Oh man, <laughs> Thanos rage. <laughs> Thanos rage. Oh, that feels so good. Oh man, oh I'm navigating the spaceship and shit. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so so the way I felt after watching all these movies, some were great, better, some were better than others, mm. but for the most part, they were good to excellent. You know. Um, it was a rare misstep. Everybody wants to point to the, the dark world, you know, yeah. Thor the dark world, yeah. which was just okay. Yeah. But some things in this movie actually made up for it a little bit. But um, I think it stuck to landing. I agree. I, I feel like the, the characters that were important to us got arcs that were meaningful. The people that needed to get uh, where they did. People, everyone got where they needed to go. 
Um, not just for the in-universe reasons, but for the extra universe reasons, the projection reasons, you know. Uh, you can't spend, you know, you can't ask someone to spend 30 years of their life playing one character. Right. Basically. Right. And then that's not a spoiler. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, so a lot of these stories finished the way they should have. And I thought that was the, that's what, all you can really say about a movie like this is that at the end, you know, is, is, is what, what we saw, was it satisfactory? And the right. answer is yes. I think they did a really good job uh, getting everything together, uh, taking such a disparate number of characters, bringing them all together and having the story you know, feel like there are real stakes that paid off. Well, it's a universe that was built, and you brought up a point about, mm -hmm. you know, um, you can't ask these actors to play characters like this for the rest of their lives. Yeah. But Marvel did something really unprecedented, you know, in the beginning, signing these actors and actresses to multiple years yeah. of, you know, contracts where it was unheard of, signing like a six to nine year you know, um, contract with the, you know, playing one character for like a number of years. Who who would do that? Right, that's crazy. You know, I mean, usually it's one project at a time and then you'll see how the next project goes and you mm -hmm. negotiate your, if the project is good, you negotiate your, um <clears throat> you know, you know um, money for the next one. And if you and become an in-demand actor, if, if, if it is successful, mm -hmm. then you're stuck in a contract where, you know, you really have no wiggle room. So the, these, but as at the same time as an actor, you don't know where your next paycheck is coming right. from. Right. So signing a, signing a long-term agreement, mm -hmm. you know, a contract with a company, you know, at that point in time was really unprecedented for, you know, the company. So it really benefited Marvel. And, I, I, and to some point, it benefited the actors too, you know, mm -hmm. um, and, and everybody that was doing it because... Um, they they've got nor notoriety that they may not have gotten, but you know before this, right? You know, um, the industry has changed and Hollywood has changed throughout these years. You know, a lot of things have actually changed in pop culture you know, with these Avengers movies. Um, you know, smartphones, for instance, like that's how old the, the MCU is as old as smartphones. Oh yes, they're about yes. they're at the same age. People don't think about that, but it's true. Dude, George Bush was president. <sighs> <laughs> when Iron Man came out, George Bush. So we had three presidents in between when the first MCU movie came out to right now. And for them to pay all that off, and I think that they did. Okay. I really think they did. That's and that's what's important. The, that's what sets this movie apart from other right. sort of like finales, like um, you know, uh, Revenge of the Sith or mm -hmm. uh, Return of the Jedi. Mm -hmm. For me, what sets us apart is that this isn't just paying off its own series. It's not just the four Avengers that pays off. It pays off all the Thor movies, all the Cap movies, yes. all the Iron Man yes. movies, all the Guardians yes. movies. It incorporates all of the you know, a lot of iconic imagery right. in order to really drive drive the plot of the story. So that's that's really impressive. Right, right, from that right. For me. Um, one of the big things I, I left with when I was thinking, I, uh, when I left the movie, it was so much fan service. Mm -hmm. I thought this was a love letter to the fans. You know, being that um, Hollywood doesn't want to just dictate to you know um you know make their movies just for a niche group mm -hmm. and they want to cater to like a wide audience especially if they're spending so much so much money and everything yeah <laughs> a lot of money <laughs> right right this was a love letter to everyone who was started out be in like i said in the beginning of iron man stages watching these movies all the way up until now and pretty much thanking them with everything that was in this particular movie mm -hmm. not necessarily that was what was in infinity war but in this particular movie like scott was saying about bringing a lot of these um, arcs to a close. Um, the it, it was a very it was a very poignant love letter. I mean, Scott, I I had people sniffing in my in my crowd. It was just like, wow, you know, you saw it in, you saw it in a um, you know, in in the drive-in and everything. I was I seen it in the actual movie theater. Um, Friday, the real way. Yeah, the <laughs> the, the other way. Not some other with, way. with a crowd of you know folks. It was and as, at one point. It was like um, you know, I was in. It, I felt like a, in, in some parts of the movie, I got you. You had cheers like you was in an actual a, a sporting event, a, mm -hmm. a game. 